Hi everyone and welcome to Biology Professor. Today I want to talk to you about the life cycle of the parasite that causes the disease schistosomiasis. Now schistosomiasis is a disease caused by a flatworm helminth parasite. So parasite meaning that it is a type of uh, a type of symbiotic relationship. So we know that parasitism is a form of symbiosis. Symbiosis being where two organisms uh, live in very close contact. So it's a parasite. Specifically, it's a flatworm helminth. So that's the type of worm that it is. And it infects between 200 and 300 million people annually. So that's a, a significant burden to the global population. It is caused by several different species of schistosoma. So schistosoma is the genus name, and there are several species within this genus, uh, and they all cause schistosomiasis um, with some, some sort of slight differences between them. Now, like hookworm, which is another parasite that I have a video about, if you're interested in learning about the hookworm parasite life cycle, please refer to that video. But like hookworm, the schistosoma parasite also burrows directly through unbroken skin of the host. In other words, it does not need a cut in the skin through which to enter. It can burrow through healthy, unbroken skin. And specifically, it's, it's doing this to people who are exposed to infected water. So, for example, if you have people that are working on, say, the rice harvest, so they're knee-deep in water in the rice paddies, uh, that's, that's a very common mode of transmission for this parasite. Now, interestingly, this parasite, its life cycle also involves what's known as an intermediate host. This means that while humans are the definitive host where the sexual reproduction of the parasite happens, uh, the parasite life cycle also requires an intermediate host where a form of asexual reproduction is happening. And we'll talk about that here in a little bit. But the intermediate host in particular is a type of water snail. Now, I already told you a little bit about symbiosis uh, and how it is this really close relationship between two living organisms who live in close contact. Parasitism is what is known as a plus-minus form. That is because one species within the interaction benefits and one species is harmed. Here, the species that benefits, of course, is this schistosoma worm, and the species that is harmed is, of course, the human host. If you are interested in learning more about symbiosis and about other types of symbiosis, including mutualism and commensalism, please see my video on the different types of symbiosis. Now let's talk about that, the life cycle of that schistosoma worm. Let's start right here. So the way that eggs are introduced into infected water is through either human urine or feces. And whether it's urine or feces is going to depend on which species of schistosoma you're talking about. So eggs shed in human urine or feces, the eggs then hatch. They release a new developmental stage that's called uh, myricidium or, or myricidia. The myricidia invade the snail, so invade the snail's tissue, where they mature into a new developmental form called a sporocyst. The sporocysts then reproduce asexually, and as they are reproducing asexually, they're releasing another developmental stage called cercariae that look like this into the water. Now, cercariae are motile. That means they can swim. So the cercariae in the water, they will develop into another form called schistosomulae. So you can see how incredibly complex this particular life cycle is uh, with all of these different developmental stages. Now the schistosomulae 
can then penetrate, uh, excuse me, the cercariae penetrate unbroken skin. And then once inside the human host, that's where they develop into these schistosomulae. The schistosomulae then travel through the host's bloodstream to the liver, and it is the liver where the schistosomulae mature into adult worms. These worms are interesting. Here we have a male and a female, and the way that they exist together is the male worm actually holds the female worm in a groove in his body. So once the schistosomulae reach the liver and mature into adults, these adults then travel to different parts of the either the gastrointestinal tract or the urinary tract. Uh, again, it depends on which species of schistosoma you are looking at, uh, which of these areas they're going to go to. So the GI tract or the urinary tract, um, it's at that point that they have this association where the female is held within a groove in the male's body and they release eggs. And these worms can live inside a host for upwards of 10 years, just releasing eggs all the time. And then of course those eggs then get shed into human urine, uh, get shed with human urine or feces, so through the human excretory system, and then the, uh, the process will continue. Now, we typically don't hear about schistosomiasis in the United States. It is mainly a tropical disease, but it's also a disease that is um, a much bigger concern among developing nations. And that is because countries like the United States that have proper public health infrastructure and proper sanitation uh, don't have these kinds of, don't have human urine and feces getting into contact with water that people are generally spending time in. Uh, and so that helps to break that chain of transmission. Um, also, it is through uh, penetrating unbroken skin. That's how the cercariae are getting into the human host. And so if a person does not have their bare skin in contact with infected water, then that also sort of breaks that transmission. Uh, and then also we do have anti-helminthic drugs that can cure someone of a schistosomiasis infection uh, if it is diagnosed. And so that brings us to the end of this video. If you are interested in learning about the life cycle of the hookworm parasite, please see my video on that topic. And thanks for watching Biology Professor.